So this is going to be a chili pineapple corn. So it's different flavors, totally, than what you just got finished eating, OK? Um, and this is more of a side dish. Um, but what I'm going to do, I kind of made this one up on the fly um, for dinner a couple weeks ago. Because so my husband and I, who he has been here in this class before, um, neither of us are really big corn on the cob people. We like corn off the cob, which I know is kind of sacrilege, especially down here. But that's just kind of how we are. So just don't tell anyone. It's being recorded, right? Um, so I usually try to cut corn off the cob for dinner for us. Um, and this one was just a really sort of quick idea that I came up with just using ingredients that I had. So it's pretty simple. Um, what I'm doing is sauteing um, some green onion tops. All right, you could also use regular onion as well. And if you did, then I would do a small dice, try to do it about the same size as your corn. Um, and then what I did was I cut some fresh corn off the cob. Okay, does anyone have trouble doing that? Do you know what I mean? You're all good with cutting. It hurts or no. Yeah, so it's just raw corn, so just like this, right? Um, and then I just hold, either hold it up or hold, depending on like the corn ear, um, and then just cut it right off the cob. Now, if you are of a mind to, you can save the cobs, and again, stick them in the freezer. You can imagine what my freezer looks like, right? <laughs> um, but go on and stick them in the freezer in a Ziploc bag, and um, you can make a really nice vegetable stock using corn cobs because they still contain a lot of natural starch in that cob and it can, once you make the broth with it, the broth has just a little bit of a thickening quality um, and it's really nice for like a corn chowder or e like a clam chowder or something like that. Um, even if you don't use any dairy, it'll still have just a little tiny bit of starchiness and a little bit of thickness because of that natural corn starch. So don't toss the cobs. So. Just let that onion start to soften a little bit. Um, and again, like I said, this is going to be a side dish. But um, chili powder. I'm using a little bit of chili powder in this. This is just regular chili powder. If you have a particular chili that's dehydrated that you like to use, that would be good in here. Um, or if you wanted to use something like a smoked paprika or a crushed red pepper, that would also be good in here. But I'm just going to sort of use chili powder because I thought it went well with the pineapple juice. So I'm really just doing a pinch. And I'm adding that to the oil um, first because that allows the spices to kind of bloom. It releases the oils that are naturally present in ground spices, and you get a little bit of flavor uh, with that. The careful thing, though, you don't want it to burn. So it should really do that only until you can start to smell it, all right? And especially with pepper, you want to be careful because it's easy to gas yourself out, right? So now I'm just going to add the corn. Now I'm just tossing that to saute. Now again, this is raw corn, right, like you said. So I do want to give it a little bit of liquid so it can kind of steam a little bit in the pan and also to help get any bits off of the bottom of the pan. So I'm adding a little bit of pineapple juice. And it's really just about a third of this can. If you get the smaller cans, it would be about half a can, OK? Um, and this is just 100% pineapple juice. You don't want it to be sweetened. Um, you can keep it to drink later, which is probably what I'm going to do. Um, if you're not a fan of pineapple juice, orange juice would also be good in this recipe. But I like the pineapple because it's a little bit different. And then I'm just going to let that simmer until the liquid is absorbed. So you're kind of doing a little bit of a simmer with the corn, right? But it's still going to be quite crisp um, and not soggy or anything like that. I'm going to add a little salt and pepper to taste. You guys always wonder what that means, like salt and pepper to taste. You're like, just tell me how much to put in. Okay. 
And this is a tip I like to do too. If I'm pouring salt from a larger container, I don't pour it into the pan. <laughs> if you've ever sort of had that terrible accident happen, I always pour it into my hand first or in another vessel, and then that way I have a little bit more control. <laughs> And if you are faced with a whole lot of corn at home too, um, remember you can cut it off the cob to um, store it that way, you know, either in the refrigerator or in the freezer. Um, there are ways that you can can corn as well. If you just can it plain, then you are going to need to use a pressure canner in order to create that safe environment for canning. But of course you can do something like a pickled corn or a corn relish, and that will help preserve the harvest, um, and you won't have to have a pressure canner to do it. So does anyone do any canning? Do you do some? What have you done so far? Uh, well, really my husband does it. Oh, excellent. So it happens in my house. That's what I mean. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> so he's done some tomatoes. We've done um, green tomato relish. Oh, nice. Before, which was really good. Yeah. Um, but we didn't. We just didn't get any green tomatoes this year. I've been like on the lookout, but it seems like you might get some later in the season. I'm thinking. So but, oh, sometimes we've gotten tons and been able to do like a whole big batch and then get yeah. later. Yeah. Which is really nice. Um, and then we just do a lot of like jams. And stuff. Right. Yeah, that's cool. If you ever do canning, or if you're interested in canning and you want to get maybe a particular type of produce or if you want larger quantity, um, make sure you talk to your farmer, right? Sometimes they'll put this in the newsletter, you know, like, hey, we have tomatoes available, or hey, we have cabbage available if you want to make sauerkraut. Um, but if they don't tell you, ask, because chances are they have a lot of produce that they would love to sell you for a low price, right? Especially when it comes to that large quantity, okay? Um, and it is nice to be able to preserve the harvest even if it's not canning, even if it's freezing, or if it's you're putting something in dry storage, and then that way you're going to be able to increase your veggie intake, you know, extend the season a little bit. So, All right, any other questions, comments? Yeah. Where do you get the bigger bags of spices from? Where do I get the bigger bags of spices yeah. from? Um, so you can get them at the co-op, actually. Sell in bulk, or do you? Yeah. Okay. So you can get big bags like this at the co-op, but it's kind of hit and miss about like what you can find. Um, and by the co-op, I mean Good Foods, uh, the one on Southland Drive. You can order them online. That's a really good resource. My favorite online spice um, place is Penzies, P-E-N-Z-E-Y-S. Um, they have a really good selection. The prices are good, and they're fresh. Um, so those, and you can buy different quantities. You can buy jars as small as I was showing you here, or you can buy bags. So those are probably the places that I go. If you just want a little bit of a spice, and you're not sure if you like it, or if you only need it for a particular recipe, then you can also go to Good Foods or other places like um, Whole Foods, for example, and just buy what you need. It's the coolest thing. You can literally buy like a tablespoon of something, you know, and then put it in a little bag. Just make sure you label it because a lot of the ground up brown spices tend to look the same and then you have no idea what's in your cabinet, so. All right, so that is that. Um, and again, this would be a nice side dish. You could combine it with some rice um, and maybe some beans if you wanted to make it more of a vegetarian main dish. You could also use this for stuffing peppers or zucchini. This is also uh, vegetarian and vegan as well, but you could certainly finish it with butter if you wanted to. Karen will pass these out for you. And you could certainly do this with 
either yellow or white corn, or if you have the bicolor corn, it would be good either way. So you can, the corn is still a little bit crisp. You get a little sweetness from that pineapple juice, but it's not like super fruity or anything like that. A little extra vitamin C. 